Welcome again, everybody, to this, the complete free Flux course presented by yours truly, Ovidus Mansurum. Now, I am very, very excited for this video. We are in module two, lesson four, and I'll just write it here as well, just so we know. This is the last darts basic video, and that is correct. Starting in the next video and as a result of the new module, will be finally, am I sad, finally writing real Flutter code, um, which is something I'm quite excited for. So yeah, there's that, it's gonna be amazing. Okay, but we'll leave that aside for now because we do still have one more final thing we need to understand. Before we can jump into Flutter, we do need to understand OOP and we've gone over three of the pillars so far, encapsulation, inheritance, and polymorphism, but the last one we will discuss is abstraction. And honestly, I think abstraction is probably the easiest one. Now, abstraction is not actually the same as that abstract keyword. Abstract the keyword basically means blueprint, uh, but it's not the same as this thing. So first, let me quickly define it. Abstraction basically means, and I'll just write it here, abstraction, you don't need to know what something is doing and especially how something is doing it to use it. That's what abstraction means. You don't need to know what's happening, you just need to know how to use it. For the example today, I've already made a, a different file called coffeemachine.dart and you can see I'm importing it at the top with import coffeemachine.dart. So let's jump into our void main and I'll just write coffee machine, coffee machine equals coffee machine. And how do I know to do this? Well, because I'm the one who wrote the class, uh, but you could also get it. Um, if somebody else had written it, you could also just ask them or there should be some kind of documentation. Um, this is what dot, what, Abstraction is really useful a lot. It's helping people work with each other's code, especially if it's a large team or you're working internationally or something like this. Imagine in this example that Coffee Machine was made by somebody else who speaks a different language, who codes in a different way uh, or whatever. You don't need to understand every single small piece as long as you understand how to use it. Okay, so now that I have my Coffee Machine, I can say Coffee Machine dots. And another nice thing about VS Code is that when I have coffee machine dots, it's already going to auto suggest some things. Uh, so let's imagine I have no idea what a coffee machine does. And actually, I made this a few days ago. So I, I, I actually forgot what coffee machine does. Um, I can see its methods It has make coffee. Uh, no such method as a default one. It has clean coffee machine and refill coffee beans. All right, cool, so let's make a coffee. And if I put my mouse over here, I can see string coffee. So it returns a string and it takes how many coffees, which is an int, All right? So let's test with makecoffee.one and it returns a string. So I'll need to print this out, print. And let's run, um, Dart. I'm in v14, 14.dart. Received one coffee, happiness. Oh, cool, that's great. So maybe that's what my coffee machine does. Cool, that's, that's interesting. So let's say I want 100 coffees. Make coffee, 100, because you know, I'm giving coffee to my entire office. Received 99 coffees. But then machine ran out of beans before completing my order because I ordered 100, but I only received 99. That's interesting. Hmm. So what if I want another coffee after this? I could refill the coffee beans, I guess. Uh, pass another number. Yeah, sure, why not? And here it says the expression of type void so its value can't be used. Okay, so refill coffee beans is a void uh, method, which means I cannot print it out. I can just 
do it here. And this means if I do this, it's not going to say anything. I'm just going to receive my 100 copies from before. But then if I try to make more copies, and let's make 50, for example, and I run this, received 50 copies, happiness. Cool, that's awesome. So one of the things I want you to notice is I, <laughs> and this is true, by the way, I honestly don't remember <laughs> everything about Coffee Machine. I, I made it a few days ago. Um, I don't know how make coffee is coded. I don't know how refill coffee beans is coded. All I know is that, you know, of course, VS Code is helping me out. Uh, I know how to use it. I know I can call them, uh, call these methods. I know that if I put my mouse over it, it's going to give me the return type and whatever arguments it takes. In fact, if this was a larger a larger program, I would also have a doc string, something which gives me more information about how to use the function. I didn't do it this time because it is, at the end of the day, quite a small program. Um, but yeah, there's that. Uh, that's, that's abstraction. It's a super simple concept. Basically, you don't need to know how to, how something was made to know how to use it. So why is this important when it comes to Flutter? The first thing we're going to do when we create a Flutter project is we're going to make some kind of new widget. In a Flutter, everything's a widget. So I'm going to have something like, and I'm going to get a lot of errors here because I don't have Flutter imported. I'll have something like class, my widget, extends, stateless widget. And then I'm going to have all kinds of things inside. What is a state stateless widget? How does it work under the hood? How did Google program it? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I, I haven't looked that much into it. Uh, I, I know all the important things about it, but I don't know the exact code that goes into it. And I don't have to, as long as I know how to extend it and how to do the different things I need to do, right? So this, again, abstraction, super simple thing. All right, guys, so that was actually it. That was it for our four pillars of OOP. So as a quick review, that was encapsulation. Encapsulation is what allows us to put the information, the variables together with the, with the methods. Encapsulation is what lets me do coffee machine dot make coffee. Encapsulation is what lets coffee machine know by itself when it runs out of coffee. If the uh, methods were not encapsulated, then this would be a lot more confusing. Next, we have inheritance. Inheritance is what lets one class take code or take things from its parents' class. Uh, this was seen, I think, most easily with the shapes class. So shape was an abstract class. We couldn't do anything with it. However, the rectangles, the ovals, the circles could all extend shape or implement shape to get all of its code, its function prototypes, and make concrete implements. Uh, implementations of it. Next we had polymorphism, which sounds complicated, but again, it's super simple. Polymorphism has a few different types, but we only use subtyping in Dart. So subtype polymorphism simply means we can use child classes as its parents class. We can have a list of shapes, which inside takes rectangles, ovals, circles, and so on. And the final one, which is, by the way, my favorite one, is abstraction. You don't need to know how something works under the hood to actually use it. And this is great because, let's say keyboards, for example. Do you know how your keyboard works? Do you know how the computer is able to read the, um, the key presses? Do you know what codes are used I actually do do know the codes because I study C. <laughs> but uh, as for the more complicated things, how does it actually read that input? I, I have no idea, some kind of electrical impulse. But I don't need to know that to type on my keyboard. So that's great, abstraction, amazing thing. Uh, if you are curious, before we finish, I'll quickly show you guys Coffee Machine. It has coffee bean servings, uses since last cleaning, needs cleaning, all of these things. This is a lot of code. We only looked at two of the methods, but it has a few others the clean coffee machine, the refill coffee beans, you know, um, this thing when, if you don't clean it for too long, it's gonna give you bad coffee. If you 
it, it knows how to add the S at the end. It can give you one, I'm gonna uncomment this. It can give you one coffee or 99 coffees. It can run out of beans. Then it can give you more coffees. It's amazing. But we don't need to know any of this great stuff. Okay, so that was it for today. I am going to upload both this source code and the coffee machine source code if you are curious to poke around. And yeah, look forward to the next one when we're gonna finally start writing real Flutter code. So for myself, Avidius, I'm out.